Hi, my name is Jason Edwards and I'm a therapist. I'm the author of the book Monsters Live Amongst Us and unfortunately, or I say unfortunately, maybe fortunately, in my past I've suffered with narcissistic abuse. Today I want to talk to you about what I think is probably the worst type of narcissistic abuse you can ever suffer. And that is actually narcissistic abuse in the workplace from a manager. I say it's the worst abuse you can suffer because if you suffer abuse in a relationship or a family member or a partner or a friend, you can probably do something to get rid of these people in your life. You don't have to be holden to someone in your family if they're abusing you. As difficult as it might seem, you can get rid of an abusive partner. You don't have to see someone who masquerades as a friend. But with work and with managers, it's difficult and it's very different. Because this is the person who you have to see on a daily basis. And not only that, you probably have to do as they say. A while ago, I worked for someone who I would describe as the living embodiment, the perfect embodiment of a narcissist. In fact, it was probably this person who really introduced me to pure narcissism. And it was only when they were actually described to me by another work colleague as a narcissist that I really started to do my research for my book. I started working for a new company and like any new employee, I was quite excited. And I was quite open and positive to meeting lots of new people, to working with my new manager, to running a new team. But from day one, I was set up. And I just did not see it for the longest time. My new manager, from the outset, spent my entire induction basically running down members of the team, setting me up against people, telling me how Machiavellian they were, how evil they were, and she may have even used the word narcissistic herself. There was a long-term game plan here to divide me individually and separate me individually from everyone I was going to be working with. It then turned out that later on I had to actually conduct an investigation into abuse by the one person that she'd been running down and telling all, saying all these horrible things about. Now, a lot of people might think that that's just what happens in workplaces, that you might just have managers who are like that. But with this person, it was different. It was systematic, it was calculated, and it continued on a daily basis. No one knew where they were with them. One day I was told one thing, one day I was told another thing. It seemed to change on a daily basis what my brief was. I never even really fully found out what my role was. And when I tried to approach them, my supervisions with them were horrendous. I remember having one supervision where they just ranted at me for an hour, non-stop, and then stormed off out the room. And none of this went down in the supervision. And then it started to get slightly worse because they really started to undermine some of the work that I was doing, trying to pull apart some of the projects that I've worked on, telling me that I hadn't done things in the workplace that they'd not asked me to do, really starting to cause me to doubt myself. And that was the problem. I then started to suffer with self-doubt. And this is one of the main key roles of any narcissist, particularly a narcissistic manager. If they can get self-doubt in, they can cause you to start to really question your actions, almost like a little bit of gaslighting. You then become vulnerable. I then started to rely on this person to tell me what to do. Can you see where I fell into the trap? So they then started guiding me in numerous wrong directions, telling me this is where I needed to be, this is what I needed to do. It all went horribly wrong, as you can imagine. I think I ended up in a bit of a mess, a bit of a state. I didn't know whether I was coming, whether I was going. And then someone said to me one day, this person's a narcissist, Jason. This was someone that I'd known with them and worked with them a long time. They said, this person is a narcissist. 
So I looked at the term narcissist, and then I looked at the term narcissistic boss and narcissistic relationship, and every key component just fitted. And I suddenly realized who this person was and what they were doing. I went and met with a friend, and I told them my experiences, and I'd started to put together some information on narcissism and, and how to survive and cope narcissistic abuse. They then said to me, you want to write a paper? and produced it. The paper actually grew and grew and grew and grew from a paper to this Monsters Live Amongst Us. And it's one hell of a long paper. And I put in there every single thing that you would need to do to spot narcissistic abuse, survive it and cope with it. But let's just go back a bit. Before I actually did that, I was still working with my absolute tyrant of a narcissistic manager who was basically undermining me reducing me to goodness knows what on a daily basis as someone that couldn't even make a decision. At one point, I actually even went and complained to their manager because I was so concerned about their abusive behaviour. I told him everything that they'd done and his response, I will remember to my dying day because he did not know how to deal with his abusive manager. He looked at me when I told him about the coercion, the manipulation, undermining everything I'd done, and what could I do about it, he basically looked at me, shrugged his shoulders and went, none so strange as folk. None so strange as folk. That was the best response I got from him. So I realised he was completely inadequate and he wasn't going to be able to do anything about it. So I knew it was going to be down to me. So I started to put a few tactics into place and a few techniques to actually get back my self-esteem, to get back my control. The one thing I started to do was to make sure that I was going to live in reality. And I really started to question absolutely everything that my narcissistic manager said. And I found this was so helpful. I started to ask them when, where, what, how, what time, when did this happen, who said it, who can I go to check back to? Anytime they brought me anything that was coercive or manipulative, I really questioned it. They didn't like this because I did the one thing that narcissists hate was I dragged them into reality. A narcissist hates it when you drag them into reality. They don't know what to do. It's the one thing I write about in my book is you have to sweep the leg, sweep the leg, Danielson, and they cannot stand that. When you drag them into the real world, when you question their omnipotence, they don't know what to do. Because they always used to like to basically tell us how skilled they are in everything. And my particular narcissistic manager would tell me, I mean, they had a degree and a qualification for everything. Law, therapy, social services, you name it, they knew it. But if you actually dug into that, it was obvious they actually knew very little. So the next thing I actually did, when I started to open my eyes, and that's so important, when I started to open my eyes and see this person for who they were, realised they weren't my saviour, they were someone who was destroying me, I then started to drag them into reality. The next thing that I did was something that I'd read about many years ago in Niccolò Machiavelli's The Prince. If you've ever read The Prince, it's a hard-going book for anyone to read. But it's a great book for helping you to deal with narcissists. Get it in writing. Machiavelli said, any time my manager asked me to do anything, I would always insist that I got it in writing. And I would email them back on meetings we had had just to get them to confirm all of the points. This really protected me. This really stopped a lot of the abuse because they then had solid evidence that I had said to them, I understand your message. This is what you want me to do. And this is the way I'm going to do it. Can you confirm that back to me? But what they would try and do, they'd be sneaky. They'd then phone me back and say, oh, I haven't got time to write emails. It's easy to phone you. But I would then transcribe the conversation on the telephone back in an email. So I really started to counter move, counter move, counter move. The other thing that I did, and it's a technique I describe in my book that I developed with a great young man that came to see me for therapy when he was being abused, was I developed the portcullis and drawbridge therapy. And it's a great technique for actually lowering your drawbridge, but not allowing people to actually come into your keep or your kingdom. 
It's like the old castles used to have portcullises that came down. I used to allow them to actually communicate with me, but I wouldn't take the thoughts on board. I stopped at that point. So I could, I could see them and they could see me, but I wouldn't allow the thoughts in. And I write extensively about great ways that you can do that because it's so important that you keep what's up here guarded and not let the narcissist in. Remember the movie Silence of the Lambs when Jodie Foster's uh, manager um, says to her, don't let him into your head. Don't tell him things. That's so important when working with a narcissistic manager. Don't tell them things. Don't let them into your head. Anything you tell them about your life, your background, they will, they will use that. They will explore that and expose that and use it against you. The other thing that I did was I used something called Trojan Horse in which I actually stopped them using coercion and manipulation. And I put this under my mental martial arts section and verbal jiu-jitsu. The Trojan horse is, is the wooden horse of Troy, in that the, they moved the wooden horse in as a gift. But basically, it was full of enemy soldiers, and, and when they let the, the horse in at night time, all the enemy soldiers came out and let everyone else in and killed everyone in the town. So I stopped receiving their gifts. And by that, I mean I stopped taking on board and completing the actions that they asked me to take that would actually have me distance myself from members of my team. For example, um, my manager said to me, you've got to stop this person allowing this person in. You've got to stop them allowing this person in. Uh, they've got this unnatural relationship with them. They shouldn't be, this person shouldn't be coming in to the department. And so I sat this person down and said, you, you can't have this person in the department anymore, that you can't let them in. Only to have my manager then allow them to have that person come in behind my back. So it made them look like they were this really fantastic, really brilliant manager. And I was this really awful, evil person that was stopping them have a friend coming in. But they'd asked me to do it. So I stopped letting the Trojan horse in. I did a lot of work on changing myself and developing myself. Ultimately, I realised as good as I got at dealing with my narcissistic manager, nothing was going to change. This is the worst part about a narcissistic manager and working for an organisation or a company where you've got a narcissistic boss. If they're well thought of, if they're highly thought of, if their manager is incapable of dealing with them like my manager's manager was, they're always going to be there and they're not going to change and they're probably going to be rewarded for their bad behaviour. So you might think this is an unusual thing for me to say, but what I actually did in the end was left. I left the company. I had a meeting with them and I'd already packed my bags, I was ready to go, I'd written my resignation letter. After having my best month with the company, after getting some great deals for them, after securing some really good positions, it's time to go. And I did that because I realised at best I was only ever going to be able to just deal with this narcissistic manager. And I remember walking out the doors of the company, left my bag, left my equipment, said goodbye to one person, the doors opened and the sun shone on me. And I thought, yeah, this is great. This is the right thing to do. And now I've got freedom to go and do what I like. And obviously doing what I like was writing my book, working as a therapist, working as a mediator, crisis consultant. My world took off. Don't ever be afraid to leave a company. Don't ever be afraid to think, I'm never going to be able to replicate this. I'm never going to get this back. You will. I left the company and it was the best thing I ever did. Things have moved on for me in so many good ways. Sometimes the best it gets is to leave a company if you've got a narcissistic manager, you won't be able to get them to change. People often say to me, how do you get a narcissist to change? Or, or what do you do? They're never going to change. Always remember, your narcissistic manager, your narcissist, they are rewarded for their bad behaviour. Their strategies in their head work for them. They, they don't think they should change. They don't see that they should change. They just want to keep going as they are. They think we're in the wrong, not them.
It's been really good talking to you today. I'm going to do some more posts maybe on dealing with narcissists in the workplace because it's a key topic. If you've got any questions for me, please file them up, put them below uh, on either my YouTube page or my blog. I'm always happy to look at any questions and answer anything I can. I also see people for one-to-one -one sessions and for Skype sessions. And uh, like I say, take a look at the book. It's something I'm really proud of. It's got some five-star reviews now. Uh, it's got some lovely reviews. Thank you to everyone who's reviewed it on Amazon. It's available in paperback and download. Okay, so like I always say to everyone, stay grounded in reality. It's the best thing of all. Don't let people in there, particularly in the workplace. Okay, take care and until next time. Bye-bye.